Happy Wellness Wednesday mornings yeah. with Luann and Tim. And a huge thank you to KC Security for continuing to sponsor our show. Thank you so much, guys. It's good to know you are out there watching. Otherwise, I and couldn't paying. pay my mortgage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my house wouldn't be safe. Yes, that's right. House wouldn't be safe, for sure. Um, 2014 on this day. Joan Rivers passed away. Oh, Joni. Oh, Joan. Yes, this was the day. I guess she was never called Joni. She doesn't she doesn't no, seem really a like a Joni type, I think right? I'm, yeah, I don't know. Um, weird though to think that after all the times that she spent under the knife for surgery, yes. that of all the times for her to pass away, it was just for like a nodule on her vocal yes. cords, you know? Like she Oh, look at her. She's so cute. Wow. My goodness. So she had this surgery, but there was something that went wrong. It was the uh, it was the anesthetic. Oh, it she, was. They shouldn't have done they sh what they were doing that procedure should not have been done in a doctor's office. It should have been done under under in a hospital. Ooh. So yeah, that was what happened. Yeah. Cardiac arrest from the anesthetic, I believe, is what caused her death. Imagine that. Just, and you know, just going in to have yeah, a like polyp a, or whatever. Yeah, you know, like a day surgery thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. You like that's like Julie Andrews going in to have like a nodule taken right? out and she loses her voice yeah. for the rest of her life. When it's your time, it's your time. Anyway, thanks Joan for a great career yes. that you gave me. <laughs> And are still giving him. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, Whoopi Goldberg is some kind of ticked off this morning. What happened? Well, Deborah Messing and Eric McCormack, mm -hmm. who are in the reboot of, of Will, and Will and Grace. Name dropping, Eric McCormack and I went to school together, but yes. Oh, yes, I, I knew that. I remembered. <laughs> yep. um, apparently, they tweeted that they wanted a list of... Donors. Donors who were at a Donald Trump fundraising event published. Yeah. She said it was a, was a it, Hollywood they event. They have a or right to know. It was like a Hollywood event. Yeah. And I think that there was because they were planning on going. I guess as mm -hmm. as part and of then the they Will and Grace team. Backed right off. And they heard that mm -hmm. there were going to be people there, so they asked for a li Deborah Messing started yes. off by saying, yeah. "I would like to see a list of who the people are who are Trump donors that are going to be at this thing." The public has a right to know. She said. Yeah. Whoopi Goldberg disagrees. Now, Whoopi Goldberg is not the current occupant of the White House's biggest fan. No, she, no. At all. But, but she thinks this is a slippery slope. Well, you know what? It's everybody's, public information. Well, everybody's allowed to vote for who they want to vote for, and that's the constitutional right. That's all about freedom. And she didn't say the words, but in my mind, she was alluding to McCarthyism. Okay, I'll bit. tell you what. Uh, you have a right to vote for who you want to vote for, and you have a right to shop where you want to shop. Absolutely. So, for instance, the NRA is now basically uh, supporting a boycott of Walmart because Walmart is no longer carrying ammunition. And They're not supporting it. The NRA is supporting. Well, they, the, the NRA is saying shame on Walmart. Basically. Yes, they're not supporting. So, yeah, but so anyway, the, so the NRA is is basically saying shame yeah. on Walmart, and yes. all these like, and all these pro gun people are saying I am never shopping at Walmart again because they are no longer carrying ammunition or guns for these particular. They're still selling rifles for and deer, shotguns for hunting. They're not rifles. selling handguns and they're not selling ammunition for and the AK. And you can't AK walk in there with a gun on and you. They, well, you can, but they're asking that you don't. In the states where open carry is legal, they can't tell you you can't come in the store. They're requesting um, that you don't. And they're saying that anybody is welcome to come in with concealed carry. It was so interesting to see the NRA reaction to that announcement by Walmart because it was like a father scolding a child. Yeah. Shame on Shame you. Shame on you. I was so just now, the same way that those people have a right not to shop at Walmart because they don't support sure. that, wouldn't you say, I'm not going to do business with this person because they support Donald Trump? Absolutely. Okay, so Deborah Messing is saying, I want to know who the people are who are supporting Donald Trump so I can know if, I, if they are publicly endorsing him with their money, I'm not going to give them my business. Right? But publishing it for the world to see but is they're not. But they've donated it to public. It's yeah, on record. Yeah, yeah. Anybody could find that information out. But the point is, she wants, is it published. she wants it to be made public. And there's only one reason why she wants it to be made public. To shame them. Because she wants them to feel the shame of themselves. So that's McCarthyism. But she if says, think if it, somebody published her name for all that she says, I've donated to all kinds of Democrats. You could put my name up. I'm not ashamed. Why do they not want their names published? Are well, they ashamed? Well, 
why why does she think they should be ashamed that's not her judgment that's she not her call no, to me she does she thinks that they should not be ashamed if, if you support him and you gave money to him then you should be able to say yes i support donald trump i gave his campaign money i believe in what he says say that and then she can say mm. okay that's your opinion i'm not dealing with you i don't know i think if it's public if it's public record then well it, if it's public record that's a different thing the donations are public but, record. yeah i don't know i think it's that, a slippery slope i don't know it's it's a little precarious. For Were you me. okay? I watched Anderson Cooper last night. Oh my gosh, that story! This is the horrific story. Okay, so the Bahamas, right? They're interviewing. There's somebody on location. Anderson's in the studio, and there's a guy on location, and he's interviewing this man. And they're standing outside, and the man is w like soaking wet, and he's beaten up. He's like his face is red. He's got a couple bruises and stuff, and completely like soaked and whatever and the reporter's asking like what happened and he says well at my house like my wife and I were in our house and the water was coming in and it just kept getting deeper and we got trapped and we couldn't go anywhere and we just kept going up and up and he said at one point the you, the appliances lifted up and started swirling around oh, in the water he said that's why I think, think about why he said that's why I think I got cut up and beaten up I got hit by appliances he said and my poor little wife was up on the top of the kitchen cupboards trying to stay out of the water but eventually they collapsed from the being so wet oh, the walls right. didn't Heavy support the cabinets anymore and he he said and then I watched my poor little wife drown <gasps> he said it on air in front of the reporter and the reporters went oh I'm so sorry and the guy was like I know and he and then he sort of cried a little bit and oh like, my gosh. And then I had to swim oh. underwater and get out of my house and I, I managed to like he had to hold his breath and swim. Oh. And then he his, he had a boat moored like 40 feet away but he didn't think the boat would still be there so he didn't know what he was swimming out to. Mm. And he comes up outside of his house and finds his boat. And that's how he got to safety. But they were and they wanted to take him away and he said he wouldn't leave until they found his wife's body. You know what? When you're <laughs> she drowned in their own house, and he watched her, and he got hit by appliances. This is what's happening. Oh, I, you know what? Why I'm a journalist, you? and I I totally understand covering a story. I have a difficult a difficulty with that kind of situation. <sighs> that poor man was obviously in shock. Yeah, <sighs> because there's always a producer talking to the person before they go on camera saying, okay, we're gonna ask you about this, we're gonna ask you about that so that they're not on camera because that's not good news, right? Uh, good news coverage is by good news is what I mean. So they had no idea, obviously, that this gentleman's wife, he watched her drown. I don't think he Because told he's that. in shock still. Yeah. You know? So is there I a moment where you, you need to sort of give people like a second to get their brain around what just happened? You know, it's like you see the kids at the school shootings now, which right. happen every other day. Well, the kids are like walking out of the school and they stop for the reporters and they're talking to them. And yeah, and I was crying and I just didn't know. It's, it's like such an everyday thing now. It just, it blows my mind. And the story has to be covered. As a journalist, I would do the same thing. But I don't think they knew what he was going to say. No, like I got my well, that's what I'm saying. I got was the reporter had no idea. He well, was no doubt because he I was in shock. My wife drown. Oh my gosh, what a horrible thing. Oh, and then and then there's the whole tragedy with the boat off the coast of California. Oh my gosh, the fire on that boat, seventy five foot boat. They were. Oh, oh how yeah. many people do in? It, it, I think it was up to about thirty four now. Yeah, and okay, this was a trapped. terrible morning. Let's can we have a good news story? Yeah, let's have a good so news story. About this, but hey, just, Adam Lambert, let's awesome. Let's say we're lucky. We're very lucky to be here and yes, say we're we are. safe and, and everything. Okay, well, Absolutely. Adam Lambert. He released his colorful new music video, is how it's being described. It's called Superpower. He looks hot. Does he? Oh my goodness. Tons of color. Like he, he wears a full on green, like deep emerald green Ooh. suit. But it opens up by him. <laughs> Uh, driving in a convertible with longer hair a little bit and he's got a beard Ooh. so that's new and he's looking just so amazing and then he jumps out of the the car and pulls his wig off and his hair's a bit shorter and then the next the next thing there's a whole bunch of dancers around him and he's got kind of that elvis pompadour uh -huh, thing happening. Yeah. i don't like that so much but you know is the beard gone by then no still with the beard oh, look, is that yeah that's not him in the show that's a green suit but that's not him yeah okay um he has a beard there, doesn't he? Yeah. Look at this. Is that Adam Lambert? Oh, okay. Uh, 
I don't like your shoes and socks. I don't have my, no, I um, don't have my glasses on. But how's the song? Awesome. Okay, good. It's so good. Well, he, Buddy can he sing. goes like this and it, and it just like, boom. Buddy can sing. <gasps> he can sing Did you watch some. the thing, the documentary about him replacing uh, no. Freddie Mercury? So it's Adam Lambert and Queen. There's a whole documentary about how he Already. became the new voice of Queen. Really cool. Yeah? Very cool. Do you think it revived Queen? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. He's touring with them again. I mean, they're, yeah. they're touring. Isn't that awesome? Oh my God, we're out of time already. Yeah. Okay. So listen, um, it's Wellness Wednesday. Mm -hmm. While I was away, Alex was replacing me and he did an interview with uh, Lisa Bezo Allen about this new thing, Grocery he for was Good so on excited. Grove Street. And Alex said it's such a cool interview. He learned so much. He thinks it's a phenomenal thing that Lisa and the gang are doing down on Grove Street with this grocery store. So that's one interview. And then Johnny Max, jo the Johnny Max band coming up from Toronto, I think it was. Anyway, they're performing. Mm, Tomorrow night, I think. Anyway, check out the interview. There's a great hot band coming, like funky, funky, jazzy, soul, Ooh, God, like yeah, dirty. So yeah, like New Orleans, dirty. Yeah, you're gonna like it. You, Jim, you and Jim would like it. <laughs> yeah? Watch the interview. That's coming up. Plus, Luann has the news. So we'll see you in just a minute on Morning with Luann and, and Jim. Jim. <laughs> They served to protect our homes. Now many are homeless. They fought for our way of life. Now many are fighting personal battles of their own. They answered the call for our country. Now we honor them by serving our communities. Help us help Canada's veterans. Become a Legion member today. Teddy yeah, fell. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I'm not driving. I'm way too stoned. How are you feeling, dear? Oh, since we had that talk, I'm not driving tonight at all. What, what about, about you, you, Dave? You only had a couple of drinks. And only a couple of puffs. I don't drink and drive. No way I'm getting behind the wheel when I smoked weed, too. How are we getting home, then? Well, you can drive, Dave. Come on, Dave. Take one for the team, buddy. Don't let weed and alcohol influence your decision to drive. Yeah, I need a ride. I am a mother, and I am a sister. I'm a father. A wife, a daughter. I'm Somali lady. I can very proudly say that I'm a teacher. A social worker. I'm a human being. I have a dream to be free. And I wish we live in the world full of peace. Welcome back to The Morning Show. I bet you weren't expecting to see my face on it. I know I was doing The Morning Show last week, but they had to bring me in once again. And this, this whole idea that we're about to discuss just checks off so many boxes for what this community needs. And I'm so excited to bring in Lisa Bazo Allen to discuss it a little bit. So Lisa, quickly tell us a little bit about what Grocer for Good is. Well, thanks so much for having me, Alex. And it's uh, Grocer for Good Ability Development program. So we'll be known as Grocer for Good. Mm -hmm. So really the primary goal of the um, the model, especially with the grocery store, is skill development, paid employment, and also just getting people more engaged in their greater communities. So that is really the primary overarching purpose of the of the organization. As well, it will employ um, persons with an autism spectrum disorder, other intellectual disabilities, and chronically underemployed. So we're really taking a look at um, people that 
have a barrier to employment so that they can um, gain some really great job skill development as well you know get up and go to work right because that's that's what we do and it gives them such a sense of pride to be able to say I'm going to work I'm earning my keep and it it makes them feel that much more part of the community so it just like I said checks off so many boxes and even the location of the store makes so much sense so it's going to be located at 133 Gore Street and why did you decide that that location um it was interesting and it was, and it was an, you know, a number of different factors that, that led to the location. I was at a, um, one of the partnership meetings at the Neighborhood Resource Center, all the managing partners and you know, collaborative partners. We mm-hmm. meet twice a month. And I saw the Ferenc sign. I was like, oh, I think I'm too, er- like too early on to take a look at it. Right. Um, but a couple of my board members, we went to go see it. And then we went back again. And really, it ticks off a lot of boxes in terms of location. It's close to transit. It's in the neighborhood, primarily where we want to be located. And it is located in a designated food desert. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it really did hit a lot of the different aspects that, the, that we were looking for and the space has just been renovated so um, space wise it's also something that we can just go in and there's not going to be a lot of leasehold improvements or anything like that because it's all been done and it's affordable so you know when you're looking at sustaining a model yeah. affordability is key but also you know you want your employees to be safe you want it to be a, a positive environment and it also creates another um, organization in that Gore Street hub to really kind of build on what that neighborhood is becoming, um, mm-hmm. which really started with the Neighborhood Resource Center exactly where five I was years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm like beyond excited to be at that location. And it makes so much sense. Like you said, when Walmart closed in the station mall, the office was kind of talking about where are people going to go downtown who rely on transit to go get groceries? I mean, are you going all the way up to Great Northern to go to your grocery stores? It's kind of unrealistic to expect a family that maybe has a young child to bring all of these groceries home. So this just makes so much sense to have something downtown again. This is fantastic. So what sorts of jobs are going to be available to be applied for and what sorts of people are you hoping to fill those roles? I know you were saying in another interview you did that some people are going to prefer the quiet back room job. Mm-hmm. Some people are super social. So maybe you could dive into that for us. So I've met with both um, Ontario Works and Ontario Disability because you know really the key for any organization to thrive is collaborations and partnerships. So we will definitely place um, people on their roster in the store and it'll be a number of different things and that's really what we're working on right now is you know making sure that those job descriptions and tasks match with um, the people that we're going to be servicing so it's a little different than say a typical model in terms of policies and procedures and and task lists and job descriptions so I mean it'll be anything from a greeter to someone who can clean do cash do inventory stock shelves tidy up so it's a variety you know customer service so it ticks off a lot of boxes in terms of both skill development and also for people that are very maybe apprehensive to be social right it gives them a nice really kind of highway of ease Mm. into that next role so maybe they start just stocking shelves but then maybe they'll talk to some of the customers that are in the store and then maybe that will lead them to a customer service position so it's really about um, layering that skill development so that they can really gain some solid experience and maybe get out of their comfort zone a little bit as well and and that's just so perfect and obviously coming up with a business that that has so many different things and you want to be a charitable organization which you were granted there's hoops to jump through and you were saying these hoops were coming so fast fast that you weren't even expecting it to come at the rate they were. Yeah, I uh, submitted the incorporation in June and so what happens is the Office of the Public Guardian and Trustee takes a look at your objects. So the objects of an incorporation is what you say you're going to do. Right. And they deem whether you're charitable or not. Um, And I got the incorporation back about the third week of July and they deemed us charitable and I was just... Ecstatic. I was, I kept reading it. I was like, uh... 
am I reading? Am I reading this right? Uh, do I, I have to pinch like, myself? Yeah, am yeah. I dreaming? So, and I did all of this myself. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky that I have, you know, the background to. I didn't have to hire a lawyer or do any of that stuff, which really has saved us a bunch of money in, in terms of startup. Um, it also made sure that we were very specific in what we wanted to do. And I have a great and varied uh, board of directors. So there's six of us, and we all have different backgrounds, but we all share the same common goal. And that's been a really, I think, key piece in getting this organization uh, going. And I'm very humbled by the support that I have from both my board of directors and from the greater community. Yeah, the community partners you were listing off, the list goes on and on. But I think everybody can kind of see that this this is just a, a fantastic idea. Now, for the product in the store, how will the, the, the pricing for that work? I know by donation, it's a little bit different. So anything that gets donated. So we will be on the Harvest Algoma uh, food rescue list for donations that will be pay what you can um, we do need to remain revenue neutral we need to be able to sustain operations pay our rent pay our insurance our utilities um, pay our we will have a program manager that will be full-time so we need to be able to do all those pieces right um, as well as pay some staff as well so then right now I'm working on a supply chain so that we can have goods in the store at a low markup but also be able to take advantage of someone who has greater buying power than say what, what we do. So right now I've got one proposal in for one um, supplier. If that doesn't work out then we'll just move down the list. Like I, I'm almost <laughs> at a loss for words. This, the, to see how fast things are moving for you guys as well is great. I know it's kind of taken you off by surprise a little Very bit, much. and now we're scrambling to get a logo and do all those yeah. other things you need yeah. for a business. Yeah. But let's talk about. Obviously, there's going to be people at home right now that are thinking of people in mind that oh, you know what? Maybe they would be able to go and fit a job. But I'll stress before we put the graphic up. Not until October 1st. October 1st. That's when we're going to have those resumes yeah. needing to pour in. But we're going to put Lisa's email up on the screen right now. So at least you'll have it. But make sure we don't want to bombard her quite yet. So when you see the email, just get it in mind. Maybe start preparing that resume. Uh, tell, tell us before we leave, what about the soft, lunch, the soft launch and the grand opening? So we are anticipating a soft lunch launch. That's uh, what I did too. I'm thinking about yeah, food. Lunch. I'm hungry. I'm ready for lunch. I know. Um, third week of November and grand opening in December. Perfect. So things are moving quickly. Mm -hmm. October 1st for those resumes, but make sure to keep to staying tuned to your news outlets to make sure you're up to date on Grocery for Good. It's in the name. It's just for good. Lisa, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Alice. Thank you for doing this for the community. It, um, it, a loss of words. Thank We're you. going to break. I, I can't talk anymore. This is just amazing. More mornings with Luann and Tim right after this. Adoptions create families. Are you thinking of adopting a child from an orphanage or your family in India, Bangladesh, Jamaica, Guyana, or any other country? Let Worldview Adoption, a government licensed agency with 15 years of experience, help. Parmjeet Mongat and Associates are experienced in handling all adoptions cases, especially relative adoptions with complex immigration issues. For a relative or orphan adoption, domestic or international, call Worldview Adoption for a consultation today. With my arms to the heavens like Drop zone to the blocks gone Can't you tell we ran up out of options? This ain't a cry group Tell the entire truth And let it set you free We undeniable We undeniable
undeniable Undeniable. This is on TV. 2018 has seen a lot of internal displacements uh, in Ethiopia. 2.4 million internally displaced in Ethiopia this year, and that outnumbers any other country in the world. But when we meet uh, internally displaced, they're living with nothing. They have no means of producing food, they've fled their farms, they have no shelter, and they have no means of cooking. We're distributing nutritional supplement, which has particular nutritional content specific for um, those at risk of malnourishment, and oil to help them cook and prepare. We're targeting mothers and children, uh, particularly children under five. Um, nutrition is critically important for infants and babies, and for mothers who are nourishing them, aiming to reach uh, 15,000 people with our two-month supply of nutritional supplement. <laughs> ባላል የሚሰራው በደቡብ ብሔር ብሔረሰቦች እና ህዝቦች ክልል በቃ አንደኛ የቃይ መስቀል እሴቶቹ እና ራዕዩ ታሊኮቹ ቀጥታ የሚተገበሩ ነገሮች ናቸው ወደ ግራ ወደ ቀኝ ሳይባል ለተጣቃሚ ቀጥታ የሚተገበሩ ነገሮች ናቸው እሱ በጣም ደስ ይለኛል ከነዚህ ለምሳሌ አንዱ የበለጣ የተጠቃውን ነው ቅድሚያ የሚሰጠው ለዩነት ሳይኖሮ ማለት ነው በዘር በአይማኖት በበሄረሰብ በቀለም በተለያዩ ነገሮች የተጎዳውን የሚረዳ ኃይል የሰበሰበውን ሪሶርስ አንተ አድርሳይ ሰውየው ሲደሰት ወይም ከዛ ችግር በመጠኑም ሲወጣ ማየት በጣም ያረካል ከመታገለግላቸው ምንም ነገር ከመታገለግላቸው አገልግሎቶች በጣም የሚያረካው እሱ ነው ስለዚህ ረካለሁ ነው ቀይ መስቀል ጋር በመስራት ኢትዮጵያ ኢዝ ፉል ኦፍ ዋርም ካይንድ ወንደርፉል ሃርድ ወርኪንግ ፒፕል ሁ አር ሰፈሪንግ ሲምፕሊ ዘ ሰርኩምስታንሴስ ኢን ዘ ኮንትሪ ዌዘር ዘ ናቹራል ዲዛስተርስ ኦር ማን ሜድ ዲዛስተርስ አይ ቲንክ ካናዲያንስ ሃቭ ሃድ አ ሎት ኦፍ ኤክስፒሪንስ ዊዝ ዚስ ዌዘር ኢትስ አይስ ስቶርምስ ኦር ዘ ዋልድ ፋየርስ ላይቭስ አር ሲቪርሊ አፌክትድ አይ ቲንክ ዊ ካን ሼር ዘት ፊሊንግ ኦፍ ሉዚንግ ዩር ኢንዲፔንደንስ ሉዚንግ ዩር ሆም አንድ አይ ቲንክ ኢትስ ኢምፖርታንት ዘት ኤስ ግሎባል ሲቲዘንስ ዘት ዊ ዊ ሪኮግናይዝ ዘት ኤንድ ዘት ዊ ሪች አውት ዌን ዊ ካን I'm afraid that I'm looking at that picture thinking is that weather over are we ever going to no, be able to sit out there it's again? Get warm again that no, reminds it's me of a joke what do you call an Irishman who sits outside on the deck what patio furniture <laughs> okay so listen remember Linda Hamilton yes she coming back uh-huh uh, term strong in. like a beast there she is that's what she looks like now 62 years old Linda Hamilton was in the Terminator with Arnold Schwarzenegger mm -hmm. what year was that I don't even know oh my gosh she was in all of them she did were there two or three two anyway two, three it took a long time I, I guess this new director Tim Miller he said he really had to struggle to get her to come back because she was been out of the Hollywood eye yes so what happened was I guess um, she said that she got to the point it was Hollywood 2012 she said there I am all alone look at her remember her that's that her, her now that's her now see what I'm saying she was so she, fierce back then ooh. Um, so she's all alone in her own. she says 2012 I'm all alone in my Hollywood mansion and I'm looking around she says my kids are grown they're gone the agent's not calling I'm thinking this isn't real life so she sold it all off and she moved I think, to Virginia to a farm for a couple of years now really she's, now she's in New Orleans New Orleans lives in New Orleans with her two dogs uh, yeah uh, Tuck oh Turk and Noodle yeah Turk. yeah and um, she's, she's been celibate casserole. for oh, at least 15 years Well, thanks she for sharing. Not had, she, well, she shared it. She said yeah. she hasn't had sex with a man for over 15 years. She said she forgets how long it's been. She says she has a romantic relationship with her world every day and the people who are in it. <laughs> you can't find a guy is what you're saying. I guess so. She was, I didn't know she was married to James Cameron. Yeah. Now, he directed Titanic, mm -hmm. right? But he also directed the Terminator films. Yes. The two that she was yes. in. Yes. And she, he, uh, 
she went to work on one of the movies. I believe it was the second one. Um, and Look she how was, young she was then, when Lou. She, yeah, yeah, when she um, initially was asked by Cameron, she was pregnant with her First child. husband's kid. Yeah. So, by Ooh. the time she got to the film to do the actual filming, she had had the baby and was in the middle of a divorce. Whoa! And then her and Cameron hooked. They had one child together. They have a, a daughter together. <clears throat> she has a son from the first marriage. Well, I didn't realize that you had some dirt there. <laughs> but they say now, when they look back, it only lasted two years. And both of them say, we never understood quite why we got together because we're so not alike and there's oh. nothing that would make sense except for the fact that they both feel now looking in retrospect that he fell in love with the character of Sarah Connor and she said so did I I don't blame him she said I fell in love with her strength and everything too yeah I seriously I want to be her and so I guess she said that's kind of thing that they happened they just fell in love over the course of the film because he fell in love with the character and so did she so does that make him sound like he's a bit of a dork <laughs> I don't know, James he, Cameron. He fell in love with his own character. With the character that he was. I wonder if he would say that. That'd be he, interesting. He, he did. They, oh yeah. Yeah. They both sort of agreed. Oh that they really? Fell, yeah. They both have sort of looked at it and went, "I think I fell in love with Sarah Connor." She said, "I don't blame you." So did I. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it was just the situation brought them together. Yeah. Well, that works. You know what? Yeah. She, Britney Spears has had a year, hasn't oh she? Oh my gosh! It just keeps, oh, it just keeps happening to her. Goodness! Now it's her family is what's messing around. Right. She's got to friggin' go to a desert island. That girl. Apparently but now. But not the Bahamas. Her, yeah, not the Bahamas. <sighs> God. Her dad allegedly is involved in a physical abuse incident toward her oldest son, Sean, who's 13, 13. years old. Apparently, you said that you read he kicked down kicked a down door. The, the father, Jamie Spears is her dad. Yes. He kicked it. That's Kevin Federline. That's her husband. Yeah, that's her ex-husband. He has now, Kevin Federline has now gotten custody. Yes. He's always had custody. Oh, yeah, for the, okay, that's yes, right. Yes, since they split. Seven months or something now. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. No, no, no longer. seven years. Yeah, seven years. Oh, so, no, you know what, I'm sorry, the number is not seven, it's 70 percent of the time he has custody, Oh, okay. I believe. Anyway, yeah, the story goes that the father, Jamie, was angry with the 13-year-old son, and we don't have any evidence that hands were laid upon the child, but a bedroom door was actually kicked in for him to get to the kid, and that was enough for them to say... I did not and by the way, the time complaint out, restraining order, get came out. from... Federline and his lawyer. Right. So where's Brittany? Or or Oops, is is I that, did it again. Is that sour grapes, you know? Like what was it at Federline's house? Where was it? Where no, it was it? It was at it was at Brittany's house and that's why I don't think they were anyway. Not good. No. No wonder good. she's struggling. Leave her alone. Please leave Brittany alone. You have real news coming up. I do. Like serious news. Yes, we okay. have uh, the latest updates on on everything that's happening with, you know, the the uh, hurricane and the boat sinking, and we have local news as well. So please stay with us. That's coming up right after. has campuses in Brampton and Timmins. Really? Did you know that if you're at Algoma University, you're only 14 minutes and 16 seconds away from Meet and Fort Lincoln? Oh wow, closer than you think.
The Sault Ste. Marie Region Conservation Authority issued a water safety statement yesterday that indicates that high flows on safe banks or other factors could be dangerous to people and pets. Flooding, though, is not expected. Forecasted rainfall yesterday was 25 to 35 millimeters in the afternoon. Currently, local rivers, creeks, and streams are flowing at normal levels. Any continued rainfall will cause levels and flows to rise, of course, across the watershed. There may be localized flooding in areas with poor drainage. The Conservation Authority will continue to closely monitor levels and flows across the watershed. Provincial police say a 62-year-old woman is dead after she was attacked by a bear when she went to check on her dogs near Fort Francis. OPP say the woman's parents called police after their daughter didn't return to their cabin on Red Pine Island near the U.S. border on Sunday evening. Police spokesperson Constable Jim Davis says one dog was injured and that police also came across three bears at the scene and one was shot and killed when it showed aggressive behavior towards the officers. He says the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry is investigating. Ontario Provincial Police say they laid nearly 1,900 charges over the long Labor Day weekend related to traffic violations. OPP's Eastern Region says the charges include speeding, stunt driving, impairment, distracted driving, and not wearing seat belts properly. They say more than 1,200 charges were related to speeding and nearly 300 were laid for hazardous moving violations. Just last week, QP education workers at the Toronto District School Board pointed out that while the board reports that there are 52 caretaker positions have been cut, the union has received notice of 90 caretaker positions being lost. And that's just one of the budget anomalies in boards across Ontario. This is the new normal. The union representing 55,000 education workers is asking for a strike mandate from its members as students head back to class across Ontario. Laura Walton, who's the president of CUPE's Ontario School Board Council of Unions, says the custodians, clerical workers and educational assistants it represents began a strike vote yesterday. Walton says she expects workers will give the union a strong mandate when voting finishes in two weeks as contract talks with the Ontario government continue saying you know we have to work together on this if we're going to make some movement so right now you know we're seeing a lot of concessions concessions that will be detrimental to the service provi provision for our students and we are not willing to accept less for the students in Ontario job security would be a one and we were just actually talking you know really it's not job security it's service security when we're talking about the services that we provide we're fighting to ensure that the level of service uh, is maintained and increased uh, and what we're seeing from across the table is uh, an erosion of that service security Bahamians rescued victims of Hurricane Dorian with jet skis and a bulldozer as their country copes with massive floods. At least seven deaths now were reported in the Bahamas with the full scope of the disaster still unknown. Let me talk about our initial assessment of Abaco. Five deaths has already succumbed. That would take the, death, the number of deaths to seven. Again, I want to assure an informed Bahamian population that we can expect more deaths to be recorded. Meanwhile, big waves were seen on beaches on the U.S. East Coast as Hurricane Dorian drew near yesterday. The National Weather Service said a storm surge warning was in effect from Sebastian Inlet, Florida, to Surf City, North Carolina this morning. A storm surge watch stretched north from North Carolina to Virginia. Welcome to The Machine Shop, our historic venue and gathering place for friends and family. Built in 1899 on the site of a Northwest Company trading post. Today we are a go-to venue hosting many expos, concerts, weddings and more. While you're here, choose one of our dining experiences. Enjoy a quiet dinner at the Mill Steakhouse and Wine Bar, watch a game and try wood fire oven pizza and local draft at the Boiler Room, or treat yourself every day to gelato and local coffee at the Gelato Mill. 
For more information on the machine shop, visit machineshopinc.ca. Quarter to five, discover all kinds of treasures and never pay more than $5. Inventory is restocked every Saturday and you can find anything from electronics to household items, toys, and much, much more. On Saturday, everything is $5 and the price goes down throughout the week, ending with 25 cents on Friday. We restock weekly with new items from various big box stores, so you never know what treasures you can find. Come visit us at quarter to five, 2510 Ashman Street in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. So just before we came back to you live, Jim, they ask us always to check our microphones to make sure they're working. And check what? What are doing? Check one, check two. This is Tim. <laughs> <laughs> I started doing that. Hi. Good morning. I'm Luann. Uh. <laughs> this is how Luann sounds when she comes in at six o'clock yeah. in the morning. Yeah, it takes me an hour or so to, to get to get up there. <laughs> to get way up there. You know what? It's good what? to be Aaron Paul. Who is Aaron Paul? Aaron Paul is oh, the guy from, guy from Breaking the, Bad. Breaking Bad. Celebrating his 40th birthday. Okay. So he invited a whole whack of people, including whack. Brian Cranston, yeah. to a resort in the Dominican. And it cost $300,000 for him and his wife to have this birthday party for himself. 25000 a night. 2500 a night. What the hell are we doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? <laughs> oh, how much time do you have? <laughs> $300,000 for his 40th birthday. I got... To get everybody the, to you go know, I got there. my 40... Look, is that where they went? You know what, though? Shut it also up. might indicate what you have to do to have friends. I don't have to pay for my friends to be my friends. For my 40th birthday, I went to Rue River Golf Club and my friend Allison threw me a fake wedding with her. <laughs> that, because we decided that we were both, if I ever got to 40 and was still single, that we were just going to marry each other. <laughs> so she put on a big fake wedding and everybody had to wear their ug ugliest wedding attire. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And then that we would had be so fun. John Deedee's came and he was the DJ. He put together all these songs from shows I've done over the years. It was called My Big Fat Gay Wedding. <laughs> Bob Cooper dressed up like a minister and married us. Allison had bows. Really? Mary Basie baked a cake. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. People gave, yeah, people gave gifts. Notice I wasn't invited. I didn't know, I didn't you, know you back then. No. Anyway, that's... Hi, Allison Russin. You're my wife, by the way. Allie. Yeah, Allie. What a character that uh, was. I know. Yeah, we had, a, we, we, had a, we had a wedding at the golf course. That, that was, was, a, it was a surprise. I had no idea. Really? Mary Lynn took me out there thinking I was going for dinner, and I walk in there, and there's 70 people all dressed in tacky wedding attire. <laughs> that would be so funny. It was. Um... Okay, so, there's a, there's a, never ceases to amaze me, people in this world, there's a Catholic school in Nashville that have now banned Harry Potter books from their school library. Again? Are yeah. they still on Harry? Leave them alone. Principal Father Dan Rehill says, this is a quote, the curses and spells, this is, this is an email that he sent to the parents, the curses and spells used in the books are actual curses and spells, which when read by human beings, risk conjuring evil spirits into the presence of the person reading the text. He's teaching people something? Yeah, he says that there's potential evil in the Harry Potter books, and so they're banned from the high school in Nashville. Oh my gosh. How old is the series, first of all? Did this guy just read one? I don't know. And so there's a lot of the parents are saying he doesn't reflect our views, and he's, he's on the fringe of Catholicism, and yet the school board says he has every right to do what he did. Because if it's read by humans as opposed to witches or devils or angels. Yeah. Or anyway. If someone else who's, you know, non human reads it, I, I bet if a fish read the <laughs> spell, <laughs> it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't be a spell then. Wow. When is a spell a spell? That's when is a spell question. not a spell? When you don't know how to spell. <laughs> Spell. I was trying to make Throw a joke. Throw to a and commercial just, break. Okay, we're going to commercial. We'll come back. <laughs> Johnny Max Band is coming to Sault Ste. Marie. He'll cast a spell. I put a spell on you. <laughs> I got 
Adeus. <risos> Have a great business idea but don't know where to start? Need help taking your business to the next level? C2C Business Services can be your guide in navigating the path of entrepreneurship with services ranging from grant funding support, access to service experts, market information, and helping your business adopt new technologies to create and foster a culture of innovation for ongoing success. Call C2C Business Services and let them be your first step in taking your entrepreneurial dreams from concept to commerce. C2C Business Services is a division of the Sault Ste. Marie Innovation Center. Welcome back to Mornings with Luann and Tim, and joining me now via Zoom, we taught, we taught Johnny Max how to use his computer, and now he's going to join us. He's from St. Catherine, Toronto area. Hi, Johnny. Hey, how's it going, Tim? How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for taking time out of your morning to join us here on Mornings with Luann and Tim. The Sioux Blues Society is bringing you to Sioux St. Marie. Finally, you're getting up here. Finally. I've been, I've, I've only been trying for 15 years to get up there, but you know, I've, I have a musician's car. So it usually can't make it past uh, past past Muskoka. You probably can't get past Perry Sound. <laughs> I'd be lucky to get to Perry Sound. But look, okay, listen. So Johnny Max, okay. you have how many years in the industry now in the music industry? I am the baby of of the blues industry. I'm only in it about twenty five or twenty six years. But. I was looking at some of the people that have some of the alumni and the folks that you play with now. You got some heavy hitters, man, that have been backing you up over the years, right? Well, well, listen. I came up in this in in the West End of Toronto when I started this. I started late in, in life. I was, uh, you know, I, I had a couple of jobs going on, and uh, I fell into this this music thing. But the guys that helped me out, like Chuck Jackson, Pat Carey, Harry Kendall, all the guys from Downchild, Donnie Walsh, um, Rod Phillips. Lance Anderson and Danny B, all these guys. There was a great, fantastic music scene in Toronto, and particularly in the West End of Toronto. And they just, they embraced new guys, I guess, with some personality. And they just showed me the ropes. And, you know, we went from a bar band to, you know, Juno Award nominations and tour in Europe and across Canada. So I, I thank all those guys. It's phenomenal. So now at the Juno nominations and also a songwriting award, international songwriting competition. Is that what it was, Johnny? Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, that was a song I wrote with Jesse O'Brien, who's with um, uh, Colin touring with Colin James now, and uh, oh, wow. we wrote that. Man, it was just. It was. Uh, we put it into this competition, and mainly because of friends of mine like Jack the Kaiser and Susie Vinick. They've all done the same thing, so I, you know, threw one in for a lark. And it just ended up winning. I guess it got the judges' uh, flavors going. You talk about your personality. That's a big part of your show, isn't it, Johnny? Uh, you, you got a sense of humor. We gather that. Just, I mean, I chatted with you before we got went live here, and uh, we were doing having a good laugh here and there. But uh, engaging the audience, making them feel part of the show, interaction, humor—that's a big part of the gig, right? 
Well, the whole thing is about the interaction. I mean, nobody wants to uh, uh, to play to an audience of Torontonians who sit there with their arms folded like a bunch of accountants, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> and and with a face like mine, you better be funny. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you got that Scottish wit. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Half wit. I'm halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> and I told you also, I weren't. I gave you advance notice that you're in good hands with the Sioux Blues Society. They have a following. Their audiences um, are generous. They love their music and they love their blues. Tell me a little bit about your influences when it comes to blues and your and your well, and the feel of your music. Well, I mean, I, I grew up. I came over here to Canada in, in uh, the mid '60s and in the '70s, which I think was the heyday of Canadian music. But just uh, uh, not only that, but also heyday of different music where every new single every new song every new album all sounded different it was all the start of fm radio as well you might be too young to remember fm radio um, <laughs> and <laughs> being kind yeah. and uh and and everything was different and you grew up with that so my influences ran from the beatles to sam cook to solomon burke to uh johnny rotten and the sex pistols Whoa. to uh uh, to, I grew up in a jazz house with Louis Armstrong, Count Basie, Teddy Wilson, all that. Me sort too. Of stuff. Me too. And Irish traditional music. So, I mean, my my whole growing up was just a melange of music, and nobody in my family can play a lick of anything. <laughs> so, what do you what do you, what do you play? Do you, you you vocals play what? Oh man, I'm too stupid to play anything. So I just sing and write songs. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. There's a quote I, I read from, uh, this is from your uh, website, uh, a heavy dosage of gumbo R&B, nods to rock'em, sock'em soul, and hints of all-out boogie workouts, and Tom Waits styled tonalities. I told you, when I read that, I, that won me over right there with that one sentence. Talk to me about that stuff. Come on, G gumbo R&B, <laughs> never heard that term. They're lies, they're all lies, man. Uh, <laughs> well, so, we, we are, we are uh, as a band, you know, seven albums on the go. We're completely different, I think, than most other blues bands, and not being disparaging, but we don't have harmonica. We've never had harmonica in our band. Our our our, our uh, voice is more New Orleans and Memphis right. uh, than it is Chicago and Detroit gotcha. sort of music. We throw in a lot of that Toronto R and B. So in that, um, the Louisiana Memphis thing, it's all melange. It's it, it's a mix of everything. Right. And uh, we do that. So we bring a little Toronto R&B, some rock and roll, a little blues, a little soul, um, a bit of jazz going in there and just make it different and always make it danceable and moving and grooving and, and just, uh, you know, just just make him, trying to make people dance from five guys on stage who don't know how to dance. <laughs> So there's five of you coming up, and as far as dancing goes, I was telling you about the venue you're performing at, which of course you haven't seen yet, but I've actually uh, done shows in there. It's the it's the Grand Gardens Verde Ballroom now. It was originally just the Verde, but the guys that own the Grand Gardens, my friends Ken and Lee, purchased it, and they are uh, working to put all kinds of brand new stuff in there. They have a dance floor right there in the middle of the room, oh. so your, your audience can get up and dance and party. Uh, you're going to have a great time. Oh man, the the whole the whole sound of the ballroom when when you were telling me what it was like, the whole vibe of it sounds fantastic. Yeah, it, it's it's I think it's uh, pretty much the places my my father took me when uh, uh, when when he was out there in his drinking days in the East End of Toronto. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're gonna be here on September the fifth. The show starts at eight p.m. Your tickets are. Listen to this. Yeah. Talk about being supported by the Sioux Blues Society. Here is the list of places where tickets are available for, for Johnny Max, for the Johnny Max band. Grand Gardens uh, North, uh, at Cases Music, at Northland Music, at Rock and Vinyl Records, at Stone's Office Supply, at the Rad Zone, at the Box Office in the Station Mall, and at Thomas Wall School of Music. All of those places are carrying your tickets, Johnny. Wow. I mean, I, I, I wish I could get up there earlier and just peruse the record stores. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I told you when you come up, you should take a little drive north and check out the, check out the coast of Superior and oh. get yourself all ready for your show. That would be fantastic. If, if, if I can get up there early enough, it's one of my dreams to drive, drive around Superior. So if I well, can this get is a the, little glimpse of it, it'd be fantastic. This is the place to do it. Okay, Johnny Max, I want to thank you again for joining me. And I will be in your audience on September the 5th because I like the sound of what you do. Man, we better be good and get our, our shoes all shine and polished then. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, be great, listen, fam. Safe be travels. I can't, I can't wait. Okay, well, d d hold on to your horses there, Johnny Max, and we'll see you up here on September the 5th. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Okay, safe travels to you, my friend. And we will be Thanks. back with more Mornings with Luann and Tim right after this. When you support The Restore, it helps Habitat for Humanity build affordable housing for families. How does this work? New and gently used goods are donated to The Restore. The sale of these goods generate funds for building homes. For every $1 spent at The Restore, there is a $4 return on investment within our community. For example, Habitat homeowners have better educational outlook, increased employment stability, improved health, and reduction in the use of social services. Every donation and every dollar we receive through the Restore helps build sustainable housing for future homeowners. Everyone needs a foundation to build a future. To find out more and how you can help, drop by the Restore at 32 White Oak Drive or go to habitatsu.ca. As a nation, Canada has participated in all of the major world conflicts. In the Sioux area alone, over 10,000 men and women have enlisted in the Canadian Armed Forces. The Veterans Commemorative Monument aims to cement the legacy of the Canadian Armed Forces in stone. It will highlight the bravery, strength, courage and sacrifice of our servicemen and women. In times of need, they volunteered to serve us. Now it is our time to thank and recognize their sacrifice. You can help honor our men and women of service by donating today. To help construct this special, one-of-a-kind monument, visit thosewhoserve.ca to find out how to donate and more. Since 1899, The Machine Shop has been a unique space for innovation and creativity. Once a leading pulp and paper company, The Machine Shop was built by Francis H. Clerg, which later became part of St. Mary's Paper in 1984. After the closure of St. Mary's Paper in 2011, The Machine Shop spent four years vacant. In 2015, The Machine Shop reopened their doors to the community for the first time. From weddings to galas to concerts and festivals, the one-of-a-kind venue has something for everyone. We are proud to work with the community and local nonprofits to host major events such as Festival of Trees, Pearls and Plaid, an evening at Hogwarts and more. While you're here, wind down at the Mill Steakhouse and Wine Bar for a quiet dining experience or watch a game and try a wood fire oven pizza and local draft at the Boiler Room. Don't forget to save room for house-made gelato and baked goods at the Gelato Mill. For more information on the Machine Shop events, history and restaurants, visit machineshopinc.ca. Three great places, one historic venue. We have fun. Listen. Oh, we do. Now we have to say goodbye, though. We do. Thank you, KC Security, for sponsoring the show. Appreciate KC it, you guys. Security. Um, listen, tomorrow is Thursday. Yes, all day. It's a short week, right? So happy back to school. Happy after Labor Day. Why are you wearing white? Because I am not having any of that. <laughs> I'm not having okay. fall. I'm not having You're fall. Not <laughs> white and flowers. Look at the little flowers on your toes. Right? Okay. No, no, the no. The rain is done. Sunshine. Enjoy your day. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Adoptions create families. Are you thinking of adopting a child from an orphanage or your family in India, Bangladesh, Jamaica, Guyana, or any other country? Let Worldview Adoption, a government licensed agency with 15 years of experience, help. Parmjeet Mongat and Associates are experienced in handling all adoptions cases, especially relative adoptions with complex immigration issues. For a relative or orphan adoption, domestic or international, call Worldview Adoption for a consultation today. At Maitland Ford Lincoln, we see our trucks everywhere. We see them on Queen Street, Lake Street, North Street, Bay Street, Second Line, Third Line, Fourth Line, Pine Street, Great Northern People's Road, Wellington, Cora Road, Bruce Street, Carmen's Way, Northern Ave, Trunk Road. Folks come from all over Algoma District and beyond to buy their truck at Maitland Ford Lincoln. Amazing prices, outstanding service. King Street, Shannon Road, Rooley Bay, Black Road, Everment Road, and even on Pine Shores. Yep, our trucks are everywhere. Get yours at Maitland Ford Lincoln, built for Northern Life, on Great Northern Road, just north of the hospital. Thank you.
Welcome to On Point. I'm Andy Martins. Thank you for being here for another edition of On Point. We've got a sizzling amount of shows for you this month, and uh, we begin it with Donna Hilsinger, War Three counselor, right after these messages. Eddie yeah, fell. <laughs> Whoa, well, I'm not driving. I'm way too stoned. How are you feeling, Veer? Oh, since we had that talk, I'm not driving tonight at all. <laughs> what, what about, about you, you, Dave? You only had a couple of drinks. And only a couple of puffs. I don't drink and drive. No way I'm getting behind the wheel when I smoked weed, too. How are we getting home, then? Oh, you can drive, Dave. Come on, Dave. Take one for the team, buddy. Don't let weed and alcohol influence your decision to drive. Yeah, I need a ride. I am a mother, and I am a sister. I'm a father. A wife, a daughter. I'm Somali lady. I can very proudly say that I'm a teacher. A social worker. I'm a human being. I have a dream to be free. And I wish we live in the world full of peace. Adoptions create families. Are you thinking of adopting a child from an orphanage or your family in India, Bangladesh, Jamaica, Guyana, or any other country? Let Worldview Adoption, a government licensed agency with 15 years of experience, help. Parmjeet Mongat and Associates are experienced in handling all adoptions cases, especially relative adoptions with complex immigration issues. For a relative or orphan adoption, demand